Welcome guys to Rubble Rock Records and More. My name is Dan and this is our weekly show where we get together, we talk about rock and roll, we talk about records, we talk about CDs, cassettes. I've been collecting music pretty much my whole life. I'm a musician. I like to talk this shit. So we're gonna have a good time. Hopefully you guys out there have a good time. Please interact in the comments because that's how I know you guys are having a good time. This week, we have three albums from the 80s that I believe should be in your collection. First album I'm gonna I'm gonna pull here is one I, I I had no clue about this artist. I actually did a deep dive, did some research, and uh, I stumbled upon her. Her name is Carla DeVito, and what we have here is pretty much I guess if you were looking for an artist, this is 1981. This came out. She released two albums. All right, and. Um, I guess if you were a fan of uh, Cyndi Lauper, Pat Benatar, Meatloaf, I know you're saying, what? How, how do those connect? Well, her background is, uh, she comes from a musical background, theater, musical stuff. Um, that's how she kind of started out. And then she went on tour with Meatloaf, doing all the live stuff. Uh, you've seen her in videos with Meatloaf, Bat Out of Hell. Um, she's in the video. That's not her singing, but it's her lip syncing to it. But um, I believe all the time she spent with Meatloaf, kind of, she developed this sound that's very reminiscent of, of Meatloaf material. Now think of that stuff with, like I said, the 80s kind of production. Um, it's a little bit of new wave. It's got a little bit of that 60s girl group influence in there. Um, she's fantastic really fantastic um, and this record you can find for five dollars I mean on Discogs I believe I paid five dollars for mine um, standout tracks are uh, I Can't Stand to Reminisce Heaven Can Wait is an incredible ballad on here there's a cover of Midnight Confession from the Grassroots fantastic song too um, it's this is a fun record like I said it's cheap I think it's a must-have, especially if you're looking for more of the, the Cyndi Lauper, Pat Benatar vibe. This could easily, easily fill that kind of uh, void that you're looking for and craving. So that is Carla DeVito. The name of the album is, Is This a Cool World or What? Check it out. Next up here, another 80s album. This one was released originally in 1983 in the UK but we wouldn't see it in the United States till 1984. And this is Keep Your Hands Off My Power Supply by Slade. This is the 11th album in their career at this point. And if you don't know Slade, uh, they're a UK band, Glam. They would have been right there with The Sweet and T-Rex and Bowie and all them. Fantastic stuff. They never had much success in the States, even though Quiet Riot covered two of their songs, one being Come On, Feel the Noise, which everyone knows, and also Mama, We're All Crazy Now. Uh, but this actually has two songs that charted in the States, and this was the first time in their career that that happened. Um, and it's the, the first track on the record, Run, Run Away, which I don't know if you remember it. It, it was a massive hit. It's got electric violin on it. It's a foot stomper, it makes you feel good. Um, and also, My Oh My, also charted in the States. A little slower, but a, a nice kind of beautiful ballad. Um, and then the rest of the, the record, it, it holds up. There's a couple duds in here, I will admit that, but um, it's got that still that, that Slade energy and vibe that, that everyone loved from the 70s. But you know, with a little bit of 80s production, um, Another standout track, Slam the Hammer Down, I thought was a fantastic rocker. Uh, Ready to Explode 
is an eight minute song. They, they break it into four parts as a closer on the album. Cheap and Nasty Love. Can't Tame a Hurricane is a Foot Stomper. So this has got a lot of great songs on it. Um, and I think it is a, an essential 80s record in your collection. That cover is great too. And once again, you can find this for under $10 on Discogs. So it's a no brainer really. The last record I'm going to recommend is a band that I've been a fan of, um, well, since high school, actually. I, I stumbled upon these guys. Um, I had a friend who had some CDs, some U2 CDs, and they also had a CD from this band called The Alarm. And The Alarm were a Welsh band and uh, started in 83. This album came out in 84. This is their debut declaration. And what we have here is essentially they were on the new wave front, but there was a lot of punk roots there. You can hear it. Um, what song? Probably 68 Guns was, was a, a big hit for them. And that's a fantastic song. It sounds like it could have been The Clash, essentially. It could have been a London Calling song. Uh, a little more produced, obviously. But these guys... Uh, Fantastic debut album, really. Production spot on. Um, Marching On is a great song. Blaze of Glory was another semi-hit for these guys. Um, the Stand. So we're, we're chocked full of really good songs. And it's, it's upbeat. I've always thought of them really as U2 meets The Clash. But mixed in with a little bit of New Wave and stuff. But you don't get a lot of the cheese. Uh, the production's spot on here. Uh, and another record. under You can find it under $10. I think I found mine for $7. Beautiful condition. So I'm going to recommend this one to go along with the other two that we checked out today. Let me know in the comments. What do you think about these albums? Are you familiar? Is it something that you would uh, maybe invest in for your collection? Guys, it's time for a hot take. This is where each week we're going to talk about a topic. And this is where you're really going to be able to interact. Because I'm curious your thoughts. You know, sometimes you're driving around, you're listening to something in your car. And you just have that moment. And you go, I'm curious if other people feel this way. So what happened was I had the first Boston album. The self-titled album in the car. And I was rocking it on my way to work. And I thought to myself, this is a fucking fantastic record from start to finish. There's not a single dud in there. And then I also thought about Boston rock and roll bands. Right there, There's a history of Boston rock. So you have bands like Aerosmith. You have Jay Giles Band. You have The Cars. And obviously you have Boston. Th those are the, the four bands I think about when you think about the big classic rock bands. I could be forgetting some, but I, those are... The, the basic ones. So I had this thought. Is Boston's debut album better than any Aerosmith album? I thought about this for a while and I'm like, you know what? I would take Boston's debut over any of Aerosmith's albums. I've always thought about Aerosmith as a band that had great songs, but never was like this album like, a, a, there, there was never a complete album there, is what I'm trying to say. Um, Rocks is Close by Aerosmith. That's probably the closest one, really. Toys in the Attic. And don't get me wrong, I love Aerosmith. But I just, I find them to be a band that has great hits and singles. And outside of that, I, I don't think it's essential. Let me know what you think. Boston's debut album versus any Aerosmith album in their entire catalog. Let me know what you think. That's hot take. Well, that's going to do it this week, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on my first episode of Rebel Rock Records and More. This is fun. We're going to have fun moving forward. I had to get down on the shag for the end of this because that's, you know, you listen to records, you want to be on the shag. Uh, recommended listening. Recommended listening. As we're, as we're wrapping up this, this show, if you guys haven't heard of Lily Allen, she was a UK 
pop artist. Uh, 2007, she had a hit called Smile. But I want to talk about the 2009 record titled It's Not Me, It's You. Um, she, in 2009, you would have had like Lady Gaga was, was booming at that point. Beyonce was booming. And she also released a record that not a lot of people are talking about. It's Not Me, It's You has this girl pop thing going on, but mashed with almost like, uh, have you heard of that band Madness from the UK? They sing that song, Our House. They, they were part of that two-tone ska movement. Anyways, if you meshed girl pop with that band Madness, you would have this, this creation of goodness that makes you feel good. It's fun pop. It's really fun pop. Anyways, that's just a recommended listening. You can check it out. You can choose not to. Let me know. Aerosmith, is there a better album than the first Boston? I'm saying no. But you let me know. Oh. Our, our producer, Jordan, saying we got to wrap it up. So, guys, till next time. Toodaloo.